so I literally just got her dry. So she is dry now. Um, oh, let me just right here. So it could be a little closer. So you can see a little better. So she is dry, but not really like soft and fluffy yet. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of work here to get her feeling nice and soft and ready for the haircut. So uh, what I'm going to do is I already sprayed her with a little bit of conditioner before I dried her. So I'm just going to go through and just, you know what, flicker brush might work better. Oops. There we go. There we go. And just give her one final, not final, but one more brush out here. Now that the hair is all dry, it's still kind of mixed in with the, the, you know, the old fuzzy hair, the frayed hair. And so just want to draw, uh, brush some of that out. That way she feels nice and soft and silky. Because if I don't brush her out, comb her out, and I just try to do the haircut, the comb guard is going to catch and it's, the haircut will look choppy. So I want to prepare the coat for the haircut so that all the hair gets cut evenly and looks nice and smooth. There we go, sorry. There we go. Even during the bath while I was washing her, so much more dead hair came out. Like, remember I was telling you about the brass knuckles, the fur knuckles? <laughs> um, yeah, it was like that. Like, just, yeah, just matting around my fingers. There's, like, two big handfuls of uh, just hair that came out during the bath, that, that dead fuzzy hair. So it, it's just incredible. It's just a, really amazing. But this is what they do to stay fresh and clean each season, getting rid of this old hair to make room for the new hair so that she can be fresh and clean with new with the new coat for the new season. There we go. We get to buy new clothes or change our wardrobe, you know, because their their coat, their their hair is their clothes. This is how they stay fresh and clean. Because if she still had hair from like three years ago, it would be so dirty by now that, you know, there just wouldn't be any sense in trying to wash it or anything. Just gotta get rid of it. There we go. She still has mats right here. I saw it while I was drying her. See that? I'm still. You're okay, girl. Let me move this out of the way. Good girl. There we go. And now she's, oh man, silky. There we go. Soft and fluffy, right? All oh, right, girl. There's that smile. I always gonna let her out before we finish the haircut, just to give her a little break. But there's uh, the landscapers outside with all their lab machines and everything. So look at that. So I just decided, you know, I don't want to stress her out too much. So just finish the haircut and then I'll let her out, you know, once it's all quiet down. But actually, I saw pee pads on the floor. So I don't know if she actually goes outside to go pee. So I'm probably just going to let her down after we're done. Let her pee on the pee pads. Because the last thing I want to do is chase a dog <laughs> around the neighborhood, you know? Just not a fun time. So, oh, sorry. Even when I was going to take her outside and let her go potty, <laughs> I had her harness around her. And then just for safety, I had my grooming loop. I had the extra long one where I tied two together. I had that around her <laughs> just for insurance, you know, in, in just in case she gets out of her harness. Because, yeah, I, once you have that happen to you before, you get a, a dog gets loose and you're chasing it around the neighborhood. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, things like that stick with you. 
And now that I have that experience, yeah, I take every precaution to avoid that ever happening again. There we go. See how where the comb catches? There you go. That's where the comb guard would catch as well if I was going through with the clippers. And that's gonna create a little, you know, chop, chop line, like a cut line when it gets caught in that coat. So, eh, and then make that little <laughs> choppiness, you know? And then you have like those uh, staircase kind of looking cut haircut where you can see all the little cut, cut lines and the haircut looks really choppy. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah, you, know, you just have to honor the process, you know. Honor the process. I would have loved to just, you know, started washing her instead of spending two hours combing all of that stuff out. But then she wouldn't have been clean, you know? It's like, yeah, the goal is to wash her, but the goal is to actually get her clean though, you know? So that's why I had to do all the combing before the bath to get her clean. I'm sorry, girl, I'm sorry. And I would love to start the haircut, but I can't, I can't actually run the comb guard through her. I can't actually do the haircut until I can get a comb through her safely. You know, so it's a process. So even though the goal is to give her a haircut, you know, it's all, you also want the haircut to look nice, you know, not choppy and you want her to feel good. So it's like, we have to get all the work, all of this stuff out before I actually cut her hair. There we go. And she's very opinionated, you know, she's gonna express herself and how she's feeling and that's okay. There we go. There we go. As long as I can make it clear to her what I'm doing and why, you know, there we go. Get some of these mats out here. Break it up with the mat split, mat, mat, mat dematting rake, shoot. Sorry, my brain got stuck there. I was like, R -r 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 remix, you know? Uh, but anyways, <laughs> dematting rake. Yeah, it splits up the mats there. Okay. And you would think after all that combing that, we did, that I did before the bath, like two hours spent, you would think that there wouldn't be any more dead hair left to comb out, but yeah, it just trillions, trillions of hair follicles, each producing multiple hairs, like a bundle of hair, 12 to 15. Huskies grow like 17 hairs per follicle. So yeah, it's like trillions and trillions of hair fibers. There we go. And all in different life cycles, all in different stages of life. Most of them, you know, kind of old and dead and damaged. And that's what we're doing here. Getting all of that out, get that mat out there. Good girl. There we go. Thank you so much, girl. There we go. Mm, yeah, see, I'm smelling her breath right now. She's breathing right in my nose. And it's not that horrible smell that I smelled earlier when I was combing her out, out and getting all that dander and all that stuff out of her skin. It's not that horrible smell that I smelled earlier. Her, her breath actually smells better. <clears throat> and like I was explaining earlier when I was prepping her, I'm, I don't brush their teeth anymore during the bath because I feel like my process already takes so long that anything that saves time that's not really necessary, I've been looking to cut out. And the toothbrushing was one of them, you know? It's like, yeah, I, I still brush the teeth for some of my clients. Um, they provide the toothbrush and the toothpaste, 
and I'll do it during the bath. But um, yeah, I'll do it if they ask for it. But really, I feel like it doesn't really do that much good. It's kind of like if I brush my teeth once a month, you know, I guess it's better than never brushing my teeth. But, you know, brushing my teeth once a month is not really going to do much good. It's got to be a habit. It's got to be something done routinely, you know, in order for it to actually have any benefits. So I feel like same thing with the dog. So I don't brush their teeth anymore during the groom. Um, but the, her breath smells better, you know, and I feel like it's because her skin is now cleaner. It's not so packed full with all that dirt and bacteria and all that stuff that causes all the, all the odor. You know, her, it's not inside her skin. She, her body's not dealing with it anymore. So I don't smell it in her breath. Just my, my hypothesis. I could be wrong about all this. I'm not a scientist, but just observations that I'm making. Oh, look, look at that. She bit me while I was filing her nails. She bit me hard. Holy cow. All right. So yeah, she, I mean, I think she was just letting me know, just reminding me, you know, don't get it twisted, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, she's cool with me now. She trusts me, but she will still cut me. You know what I'm saying? She's like, don't you know I'll cut you? All right, I know now, I've just been reminded. Okay. There we go. So now her nails are filed. Her, you know, hair is clean. Oh, that's the landscapers. Everything is done. And now that she's all combed out, I can do the haircut. And once I'm done with the haircut, like scissoring her feet round and, you know, all of that. And once she's all shaped up with the scissors and her haircut is done, then she's done. You know, this is the last part. I want to I wanna be sure that before I pick up my scissors to finish the haircut, everything else is done so that once i put my scissors down the you know she gets to go get off the table and enjoy the rest of her day you know but i want the haircut to be the very last thing i do so i'm going to go through and comb all of this out make sure her nails are done make sure her ears are clean make sure everything else is done there we go so even though I want to start the haircut, I got to get this out because this is going to affect the quality of the finish. There we go. Alrighty. Man, it was matted so thick right around here. Wow, right here. It was just thick, pelted knots pulling at her skin. So you know she's feeling better. There we go. <clears throat> just uh, thinking about her biting me earlier when I was filing her nails. She's really sensitive about that, but she's getting much better. Um, 
But yeah, it's like you may you may ask yourself like, why did she bite you? You know, she's being so sweet. You know, and the answer is because she's a dog. <laughs> Dogs bite, um, and she bit a little harder than you know than normal. And I think she knew too. She knew that she oh that's I crossed the line. You know that was a little too hard. Um, but yeah, the real reason is that's just how dogs communicate. It's nothing personal, you know. You don't want to take it personal. There we go. And I'm just reminded of uh, my daughters when they were little, when they were babies. Um, they were sitting in the back seat in their baby car seats, and I guess um, my younger daughter bit my older daughter. So my older daughter bit my younger daughter back. <laughs> And my younger daughter starts crying, and I'm like, oh, what's going on? You know, is everything okay? Why are you crying, Annabelle? And my younger daughter, she goes, Ava, bite me, right? She's crying. <laughs> and my older daughter's just sitting there defiantly, like, yeah, so, you know? And <laughs> I looked over at Annabelle, I mean, Ava, my older daughter, I was like, Ava, why did you bite Annabelle? And she just looks at me, like, she goes, because I bite. <laughs> I'll never forget that. I started cracking up so hard. I started laughing so hard. So I was like, why do I, why do I look to complicate things? You know, it's simple. Yeah, <laughs> I bite because I bite. I mean, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, when, when, uh, when Haru here bites my hand, my finger, when I'm doing, you know, her nails, you know, instead of like, you know, why did she bite me? Because she bites. <laughs> Simple. Don't complicate things, you know? All right. There we go. I'm sorry, girl. There's some mats still right there. There we go. Okay, I got it. Okay. Nice. Look at that. Like butter. You know what I'm saying? You're going smooth through the coat. Like butter. Like that. I like a silver spooner. You know what I'm talking about? No, nobody does. Okay, so there we go. Okay. Let's do your haircut, girl. There we go. There we go. All right. Now, all right. Now let's do the haircut. There we go. So her mom wants me to leave an inch. So I'm gonna do the E comb here. And that's one inch. That's the usually the longest comb guard um, a groomer has in their arsenal. Yep, and that's a 10 blade. Yeah, you know, that. Um, there we go. So I'm gonna use a 10 blade. And go ahead and clip her down to one inch. Alrighty, so, alright. Let's start. Because we're going to save the head. She likes to keep her head really long and tie it up. Well, not tie it up, clip it up. So here we go. Ready? We'll start from under the chin here. Because usually I like to start here behind the neck. But with Haru here, I'm just going to work with whatever she gives me. Start right here. Into the chest. There we go. Yeah. 
that? Oh, we still have a mat there. I still got a mat right there. Crazy. How did I miss that? I'm sorry, it's so close to the skin. That's why I missed it. There you go, girl. There we go. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I like to start behind the ear, usually, like right there. And that way it kind of sets my length for the ear. Right there. You know what, I might just do one inch all over, like legs included. There we go. I usually do the legs a little bit longer, but I think this time I'm just gonna do everything one inch. Do it, give her uh, like a nice little um, teddy bear shape, you know, just everything nice in one inch. There we go. Alrighty. There we go. Let's do the legs and everything. Okay. Yeah, I think I mentioned this uh, in the prep video too. It's difficult because it's not like a stationary object. It's not like you're sculpting um, a piece of rock, you know, that's just staying still, you know, or painting a canvas that's just staying still. You know, our medium is alive. It has its own thoughts and feelings, which can make it unpredictable sometimes, and they don't stay still. So what I've been doing is like just trying to learn their movements, just observe and watch how they move and how they prefer to lay. And I've been trying to just find ways to groom them with them laying in their whatever you know position that they like more. And I've been just trying to figure out how ways to do that because you know they're not show dogs. You know she just not used to getting groomed for hours at a time so i know that this is a big ask for her i know i'm asking a lot so yeah i just try to work with it as best i can and you're gonna get all the hair like bunched up in there so every once in a while you're gonna have to take that off and just clear that off a little bit there we go and that way you get a smoother cut there we go. Everything I do is with the end goal in mind. I want a nice, smooth haircut. That's the end goal. So the reason why I do all that combing, two hours worth, you know, to get all the mats and everything out, is because I have this end goal in mind, you know, this nice, fluffy haircut. And then when I'm washing her even, I'm spraying the hair, of the, I mean, yeah, I'm spraying the water in the direction that I want the hair to lay naturally. So these angles that I'm using to cut her hair, it's the same angles that I'm using when I'm spraying the water. I'm spraying it in this direction because I'm trying to get the hair to, you know, train the hair. I'm trying to train the hair 
to lay naturally like this in these directions so that when she's standing naturally, the hair lays in these directions, highlighting her natural features and her angles, natural angles. And she'll just look beautiful and statuesque, even if she's just standing still. There we go. So that's why even when I'm washing her, I'm not just spraying water everywhere. I'm watching how I'm spraying, you know, the temperature, warm water for the shampoo, cold water for the, or cool water for the conditioner. When I'm drying her, I'm blowing the air in these directions as well. Because again, I'm training the hair to lay in, lay in these directions. There we go. So when I dry her, I'm drying her in a specific way. And then, yeah, before I do the haircut, the reason why I do all that combing is because I want her to look nice and smooth. I, I like that nice, smooth finish is what I'm going for. Okay, so she's making it really impossible to do a haircut nicely because she just keeps weighing down, which I guess is understandable. You know, we just spent, what, three hours, um, you know, combing her and getting all the dead hair out, washing and drying her. So, yeah. I can see why she is tired and wanting to take a nap. But the thing is, like, I need these areas <laughs> I need to trim here. So I'm just going to try to hold her like this. There we go. And then, okay, try to do like this. Because she's trying to fold up into a C, into like a little donut. She's trying to fold up and lay down and curl up into a little ball. And if she does that, I really can't um, trim her up because I can't access the areas, you know, that I need to trim. So I'm trying to, now I notice that it's not really trimming that well. So it's because I got this layer of hair right there. So yeah, there are some days, I'll just be honest with you guys, I'll just be completely real. There are some days where this feels like torture. This feels like a very specific form of torture for me. And because like I'm trying to get the haircut done, but she's moving and, and tur curling into a ball and not letting me really get the haircut done. And then once I get going, once I feel like I'm getting a good, good flow, then this will uh, jam up because all the hair is caught up in there. So I got to take this off and take them, you know, and like, it's just like, every time I feel like I'm getting into a nice rhythm, it gets, it gets uh, interrupted either by her, you know, folding up, laying down, hiding, whatever I'm trying to work on or my, my, my equipment, you know, have, you know, messing up and I have to do that. Like, yeah, it's like, sometimes this feels like a never ending nightmare. And I'm just, I'm just being honest. Um, after about 11 years of doing this, I think I can just be honest, right? Um, I don't think I'm in any danger of like losing all of my clients because I'm all of a sudden being honest. Um, but yeah, this feels like sometimes like a never ending nightmare, like a, like a like torture that I'm not able to get out of, you know, until the job is done. It feels like a nightmare sometimes. But then remember when I was talking about mindset, the same circumstances, nothing has to change, but the way I look at it changes. When I, when I change the way I'm looking at the whole situation and I realize this is actually so good for me, you know, and what else am I going to do with my time? I got to do something each day, you know, and this is the way I earn an income and by working with the dog, helping the dog feel good, doing something that's difficult, that's helping somebody else, you know, like, wow, and I'm burning calories. This is keeping me healthy. This is like exercise. Right now I have my legs, my, my legs bent. So I keep my back straight. I get cramps sometimes at night. I got to stretch my legs. But yeah, this is exercise. And once I think of it that way, like, no, this is not a nightmare. This is not torture. This is not something that's, you know, um, bad for me or anything. This is great. This is something that's wonderful. And I'm so glad that this is challenging. I'm so happy that this is difficult. I can handle it. When I get in the car after this is all done, the feeling that I get, that rewarding feeling, that sense of pride in your work, 
it's it's amazing it's incredible so it's like of course i don't want it to be easy if i wanted this to be easy it, i would it would actually ruin everything that's rewarding about it you know what i'm saying and there'd be nothing special about it if it was just easy you know so then i changed the way i'm looking at it and then i'm like i'm not, i'm actually blessed to be able to do this this is actually something i should be grateful for you know and uh yeah once you do that it's like this becomes maybe not enjoyable but it becomes rewarding right girl all right there we go I said I was gonna do the legs one inch too, just everything one inch. There we go, one inch all over. Now the back of the legs and the inside of the legs, I'm gonna go a little bit shorter, so I go against the grain, give me a little bit shorter cut. That way it keeps it a little bit more tight and clean down there. There we go. Okay, just in the back of the legs. There we go. And also, it's so important not to take it personal. When the dog is acting like that, it's not personal. It's not because the dog hates you and the dog's trying to make your life miserable and the dog purposely wants to make this hard on you. It's not that at all. She's probably just tired, you know? Like she doesn't think that way. Dogs don't scheme and they don't plot. They don't seek revenge. Well, as far as I know, I hope. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, you know, dogs don't think that way. So it's really important not to take things personal, especially even when they bite you, it's not personal. It's just them communi communicating, you know? It's like, why did the dog bite me? <laughs> because dogs bite. <laughs> Nothing personal. Okay. See, it makes it difficult when they tuck their leg in and they they don't really put their weight on it. So that you can't really see they tuck it in. It makes it very difficult. So sometimes you can just hold it like that. You know, almost like keeping a chicken leg straight, <laughs> chicken wing, straightening out a chicken wing kind of, holding it like that. There we go. Get that tail out the way so I don't turn the tail up by accident. Okay, there we go. Alrighty, and then I'll clean I'll clean it up with scissors. I just want to make sure I have the general length. You know, it's pretty much the same length all over. And then I can tweak it and, you know, fix it with the scissors. Okay. There we go. All right, so she's about one inch all over now. Went through her whole body with that comb guard. 
Uh, see that? So there is a chance that it's not completely even, a little choppy, because um, when you have that there, it's gonna not cut as clean, not you know, not give you such a as as clean of a cut as you could get if you know it wasn't clogged up there. So what you can do, which really for me is kind of a little bit of a waste of time because I'm pretty good with my scissors, and so I can just kind of with my eye, you know, just scissor it up. But let's just say that um, you're a little new and you're not as confident with your scissor skills and you really do uh, prefer to clip as much as possible and get it nice and straight and even or smooth. So then you can do this. Comb everything up one more time. So it's all standing up straight. Make sure you clean this out, you know, blow that hair off, blow, you know, or if you have like a brush that you don't, you know, you clean the brush, you can just use a brush to do that. Okay, so now that's clear, we run it right back down and that's gonna help smooth everything out. There we go. Now, for you guys who, who do groom squirmy dogs like this, um, one thing that I've noticed is that when, cause like, when you saw that she was spinning around, rather than trying to stop her from spinning, right, because I'm trying to work on this side, I just go ahead and go with it and spin her all the way back around, you know, 360, <laughs> just in the direction that she's already spinning, rather than try to stop her from spinning. Like, I've just been having a lot better luck with that like they're they're just more um more cooperative they're willing to sit here because if i when she was spinning that way if i stopped her from spinning that way and i kept her this way she would have kept her focus would have been kept on that side because she would have kept focusing on trying to spin that way so rather than trying to block it i just let her spin all the way and bring her back around and then she's like okay <laughs> so again i'm gonna do the other side so I'm gonna make sure that's all clear. Okay, make sure it's all right, or else it'll shred your blades, your, your teeth on your blades. So same thing, just gonna comb everything up like that. And then if she wants to spin around, I'm not gonna stop her. I'm just gonna spin her all the way around. There we go. There we go. And then you can see like how it smooths it out, right? Looks a lot smoother. smooth the rest out with the scissors. There we go. All right, so now scissor time. All righty. Oh, wow. These old bones. <laughs> okay, so I like this long thinners when you're dealing with long coat like this. So I'm gonna put this in my pocket here. That's gonna be one of the ones I use. Okay, I like this one because I'm gonna be making you know long cuts around the head. So here's my shark thing. Cheers. I'm gonna use this one too. I'll put that in my pocket. I'll probably use this around her feet because this is a shorter curve here. This is gonna be nice to around her feet. So I'll put that in my pocket. I like these chunkers because um, these actually work and cut and it has like a swivel thumb here. I love that. So this I'm going to be using to shape everything up. So I'm going to put that in my pocket. 
And I'm going to start with this because I like to start in between the eyes. So I'm going to start with my regular thinning shears. Let me pull this up a little bit. Oh, shoot, sorry. I'm going to unplug this. I think it's charged enough so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. There we go. We'll lower that a little bit since we're going down. Oh, yeah. So, what I like to do, oh, you know what? Where is that clip? Here it is. So this is the clip that her mom likes to use to clip her hair up. She doesn't like to tie it with the uh, with the band. There we go. So what I'm gonna do is just comb her hair back. And then clip it down. There you go. And that way I have clear access to right in between the eyes. So I'm gonna comb that up, comb that hair up. There we go, at a 45 degree angle, almost like you're making one side of a triangle. Right there. See that? And now you can see the eye much better. Okay. Same thing on the other side. Clean it up. Right in front of the eye. All the hair. There we go. That way, two sides of the triangle. And you get a nice little triangle right there, right in between our eyes. Let's see. There we go. See? Beautiful, right? Yeah, you are. She looks up at me like, oh, did you say my name? Yeah, I said beautiful. There you go. Oops. There we go. Okay. Let me redo that. I accidentally caught some of that here. Okay. So there we go. Don't I don't really do much to the to the face. Or the head because her mom likes all of this. Look how silky soft it is. Oh my goodness. Wow, so fluffy and light. Okay. There we go. And then I'll shape that up with the with the blending shears. I'm gonna blend all that. So let me move over to the feet now. Around the feet. Maybe I'll round this foot then. No? Okay, hold on one second. Since I have you off of the charger, I'll put it right there. Get a little better look at everything I'm doing. Okay, so let me put this back in my pocket here. Let me this one. I like to use the short shanks for the feet. And I like short sh short shank shears anyways, the shorter ones. Like this is maybe what, three inches, maybe two inches of cutting, actual cutting, you know, like maybe two inches. But I like that because I have so much more control. And so, and um, because it's short, I have a good cutting contact all throughout. So, uh, tighten that a little bit, there we go. So I like short shank shears. I do use the longer shanks, you know, like when I'm when I'm doing stuff like this, you know, like sh shaping up that head. But we'll get to that. Okay. Can I see your feet there? There we go. I'm just gonna shape up your feet. There we go. Come on, man. Okay. There we go. She doesn't really like her feet being messed with. See that? Which is how I got bit earlier. I was uh, filing her nails. Okay. But still, she's making so much improvements, though. This is much better than she used to behave. Okay. Oh, let me get rid of that. Okay. All righty. 
I used to be a control freak, like as far as my day was concerned, you know, I used to make schedules when I was a kid and try to stick to it. It never would work out and I would always get upset, but that's just kind of how I was. And I was, so I got used to making plans. I would wake up and make a plan for the day. And then I would have like a backup plan if certain things didn't work out, you know, so because I just started learning that, yeah, you can have the best plan you want, but it usually doesn't work out. So I usually have like backup plans in my head. Dog grooming really helped me just let go of all that <laughs> and just embrace uncertainty. Because what used to drive me so crazy is that I don't know if she's going to move her foot or not. I have no control. See? I have no control over it. Like, I want her foot to stay there and stay still, but look at that, you know? And now it's like, okay, I have no control over that foot, and that's okay. You know, I'm just going to work with it, you know, and just <laughs> just be okay with uncertainty and things not not having control over things and just doing my best and working with it. Like, yeah, just dog grooming really has taught me so much, like patience accepting uncertainty as just part of the process okay let's move on to the back foot i have to stop myself from wanting to shape all this up because i got to remind myself that i'm going to do that with the blending shears so i gotta keep myself on task like hey just keep it moving you know otherwise we'll be here all night Okay, so then since she turned around like that, I'll just do the other front foot. Okay. Never mind. I'll go back to this foot. There we go. There we go. I remember when I used to work at uh, Chevy at the car dealership. Um, I took a personality test and they put like this color, um, personalities were color coded and they would put the color of your personality, the strongest personality trait on your name tag. And I was a yellow and that meant that I crave structure. You know, I like things to be predictable, fairly predictable. I don't like, um, I don't like uncertainty. I don't like things happening that I didn't plan for, <laughs> you know, and things like that. It would really rattle me, you know, if I had a day planned out and something happened in the middle of the day that just, you know, ruined everything or interrupted my plan, I would have a hard time with that. And, you know, I would get upset. I would get frustrated, you know, and I think dogs really working with dogs has really helped me just let go of all that, you know. Because you really can't, you can't have that um, that need, I guess, for control. You don't, you can't control everything with the dog grooming. You know, like you just have to try to prepare for it as best you can. You know, just work with it. You know, there we go. And just do the best with the with the situation presented to you. You know. Alrighty. Still got a lot of dead hair here in the tail. Her tail was rough. Her feet were rough. There we go. So here's how I do the tail. I like to just comb it out. Oh, she just let out a fart. Ooh, that's strong. Nice, girl. High five. There you go. Awesome. Shoot. Respect. That was that was strong. Anyways, um, here we go. What I like to do is I like to pull up, pull the hair like that, just comb it all out. And then, ooh, it lingers. Wow, that was powerful. And then I like to just clip the tip right here, like that, just the tip, right? And then, 
like that. I just kind of flag it, just trim it nice and round like a little flag. Right there, like that. There we go. All right. And then I'll blend it in the base of the tail with the blending shears once I go through. But for now, I'm going to keep it moving. Next foot. And I'm not going to. Um, freak out too much or you know because the the feet aren't completely nice and round because i'm going to go through and soften it up with the thinning shears make it nice and round and soft so i'm not going to really worry too much right now about getting the the paws completely like nice and round and finished i'm just trying to get the shape and clean it up a little bit. See, because it's kind of looking messy. You know, I don't know if you can tell, see, looking kind of messy. So my my goal right now is to just trim it up, clean it up. And then I'm going to finish it, make it nice and round and soft with the thinning shears. There we go. Oops. There we go. So it's now now the bottom of the foot is nice and cleaned up. Okay. There we go. Okay, turn this up a little bit. Okay. Whoops, okay. There we go. Oh, just to show her who's boss. You know what I'm saying? Just, just in case she forgot. I like to slam things around and throw my tools around just so she knows who she is dealing with. You know what I'm saying? Nice little reminder, right? Don't mess with me. All right, here we go. One foot left. She's gonna do everything she can to try to get me to not work on that foot. Try to keep me from it. There we go. But <laughs> my kung fu is too strong. Here we go. But yeah, this is, you know, like be nice to your groomers, really. <laughs> Dog groomers, like, I'm not sure if uh, people knew what all is involved. I think most people think that dogs just stand still for you and, you know, that it's just playing with puppies all day long, you know, that we have an easy job. We really don't. I hope by watching this, um, people start to realize what what it actually looks like to groom a dog, especially when they have mats and tangles. I know it's easy to think, but you're a dog groomer, you know, you're supposed to be able to just magically take care of all the mats and tangles, you know, like, why did you shave my dog? You know, and I see bad reviews, people complaining about groomers, but really, I hope, I hope by seeing this, you see like, wow, 
it, it's not easy. And it really does require a lot of skill and self-control, you know? Because we have to control our ourselves, you know? Like, I don't know how, how easy it is for most people to stay focused on a task for hours at a time. Because I started this at 11. What time is it? I don't even know what time it is. Let's see here. What time is it? Four o'clock. So I started at 11 o'clock. It's now four o'clock. So I've been at this for five hours straight. <laughs> I am tired. I am exhausted. Um, my joints hurt. You know, like, this is already really hard. This is already really hard work. And every day I have to like re-motivate myself to continue doing this because the work never gets easier. And I feel like no matter how simply I explain why this is taking so long and why combing the dogs regularly would help so much, you know, I feel like uh, not only am I not getting through to anybody, I feel like even if I did get through to people, people don't change. It's just so hard for people to change. Once I realized how difficult it was for me to change myself, then I realized it's impossible to change anybody else, you know? So I just stopped trying. And I'm, I'm not, you know, I just give it up. Um, and I've just been, you know, focusing on doing the best job I can for my clients' dogs. Just for me, stay private. Um, stay, you know, almost like secretive. Um, but yeah, it's like, I just want people to see how difficult this is and what we go through because this is already so hard and I already don't want to do it sometimes. When I don't like the person that I'm dealing that owns the dog, when they're making it more difficult on me, when they, I feel like I'm being rushed. I feel like I'm not being understood. I feel like my work is not being appreciated. I fire, I fire people without a second thought anymore. Like I fire people so quickly and so easily now because yeah, it's like, I just want people to know, like appreciate your groomers. Really. We're, we're doing something that I believe is magic. <laughs> the fact that we have these sharp scissors and we're all over your dog and your dog is not injured. And we actually get a, a dog that was matted head to toe combed out like this and your dog is now you know and i'm talking i'm not talking to her this owner here they i'm talking about you know people in general dog owners in general you know appreciate your dog groomers you know show them you, you appreciate them tell them you appreciate them you know because if your dog groomer decides they don't want to do it anymore what are you going to do you know are you going to do this Probably not, you know? Are you gonna find another dog groomer that's gonna treat your dog as well as they did? Pro you probably can, but it's not gonna be easy. So if you have a good groomer that you like, treat them well, is all I'm saying. Okay, let them know that they're appreciated. Don't just tell them that they are. You know, gratitude and appreciation is not something you say, and you know, it's not just words. It's it's, not, it's in what you do, you know? Alrighty. You can't just tell people that you appreciate them and you love, you know, you love their work. Thank you so much, but not actually show it, you know? There we go. Okay, so I still have that one foot left. Sorry for that little rant. It's been on my mind lately. <laughs> and I was actually thinking, like, how long can I possibly do this for? And I was like, you know what? If it's just this one, you know, because I'm only grooming this one dog today. And I usually only groom one dog a day. And I treat I treat my my grooming appointments like art projects for the day. You know, so, to, you know, this year, this is my art project today. And that's how I think of it. So, yeah, because I'm not killing myself, doing too many, and 
because I look at this as exercise and I feel like this is what's keeping me healthy and strong. Yeah, I feel like I can I can keep going, keep doing this, you know, well into my 60s, 70s, maybe even. I was watching this um, show on Disney Plus, Port Protection Alaska. It's kind of like the life below zero kind of thing. And this old man, he's like in his 70s, 73 or something like that. He's hunting and fishing and hiking through the woods. And this guy is so healthy and strong. And I realized it's his lifestyle that's keeping him that way because he's out there hiking and hunting and fishing and living that healthy lifestyle, that active lifestyle, even though it's difficult, that difficult life that is keeping him healthy and strong, even at 73, you know, rather than a life of comfort and ease. If he was just living a life of comfort and ease at 73 years old, I doubt he would be out there hunting elk and fishing like that. You know, it's like I realize that a life of comfort and ease is not what's going to to keep me healthy and strong. It's it's a a life of challenges and difficulties that I overcome. And so, yeah, I I, I was telling myself, I think I can do this till I, till I'm ready to die. Especially if it's just one or two clients a day. You know, like yeah, I found something that I can do, that I can enjoy, that provides a good income for me, you know? And what's awesome is if you are thinking about becoming a dog groomer, think about what kind of dog groomer you want to become. You know, do you want to be the power groomer in the shop who pumps out 20 dogs a day, 15, 20 dogs a day? Or do you want to be the kind of groomer that takes your time on one dog, you treat it like an art project, <laughs> you know, you really treat it like you're an artist, you know, and think about what, what kind of groomer you want to be, you know, and ha keep that end goal in mind. Because here's the thing, um, you might think to yourself, but I won't be able to, to make enough money if I only groom one dog a day. Well, how much money do you need to make, you know, because if you need to make two, three hundred dollars in a day, then charge that much for that dog. If you can only do that one dog that day, charge that much. And you will find people who are willing and able to pay that. You know? And do you need a lot of them? No, you only need about 40. Because if you're seeing the same dogs every month, and some dogs you'll see every five, six weeks instead of every four weeks, but still other dogs you'll see every three weeks. So you only need about 42 clients a month. I mean, 42 clients total. And you'll be working pretty much every day of the week. And as long as you charge enough, you'll be fine. You know, what's wrong with that? And that's, that's the thing is like, whenever I fire a client, I think that sometimes um, they feel like, what are you gonna do now? You know, like, <laughs> what are you gonna do for money now? Now that you fired us, you know? And it's like, um, just because I'm not grooming your dog doesn't mean I'm not grooming a dog. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> there are so many dogs out there to groom. Um, and I feel like I really did pick the right profession because a robot can never take my job. You know, a robot can never do this. So, I mean, a robot could do, technically, it could do the things that I'm doing now. <laughs> it could probably even be more precise with the scissors. But can a robot gain the trust of a dog, you know, and a dog that's usually really reactive and biting? Can they get the dog to trust it enough to stay still like this? You know? I don't know. I don't think so. And so, and... Yeah, I just don't think that this is something that a robot can do. So I feel safe in my career choice. I feel like I'll always have work to do. There we go. There we go. And what the part I love the most is I'm doing my own thing. I'm in competition with no one else. I love that. I'm just doing my own thing, you know? creating my art for my clients, doing work that matters for people who care. 
you know i think as an artist what more could i ask for and she's holding her head weird so i can't tell if it's crooked or she's tilting her head there we go Round that out Can't tell if it's crooked or if that's your head tilted. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to use the thinning shears to soften up these edges and soften up the feet, make it nice and round. There we go. I'm gonna hold this foot up. It still doesn't guarantee. She could probably still lift this foot like that. See? But it just kind of helps encourage her to keep that foot down. There we go. So it's easy to take it personal. Like, hey, why are you doing that? You know, why are you lifting your foot every time I'm trying to it's because that's what she, that's what dogs do. You know, it's not personal. She's not doing, she's not lifting her foot every time I'm trying to scissor around it just to make it hard on me. And that's something we have to remind ourselves. Like it's not personal. It's just a reaction that she's doing because that's how dogs react. Certain dogs. There we go. So there we go. Instead of taking it personal. Yeah, you just work with it best you can. There we go. Okay, I'll shape that up with the blending shears. Right now, I just gotta focus on my feet. Okay. And it's difficult because she keeps lifting her back foot see and she'll tuck it in making it very difficult for that because it's easy to accidentally cut her toenail too the 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 bed the toenail bed there we go as she's kicking out or stepping up and the scissors are closing it's really easy to catch that to toenail and cause it to bleed so you got to be careful with dogs that hop around like she does Okay, kind of shape that up a little bit. Okay, we'll come back to that. All right, I don't want to just yank her tail up and make her sit up when she's going down like that. So I just let go. There we go. Now this foot. So I hope to be done by five. That means that this would be a six hour job. I hope, I hope to be done by five. But I also accept the worst case scenario. So I tell myself, what if this lasts until 9 p.m.? Am I willing to accept that? And I tell myself, yeah, fine, I'll deal with it. <laughs> So, like, I tell myself, worst case scenario, I'll be grooming her till 9 p.m. <clears throat> worst case scenario. And it's like, okay, am I, am I willing to accept it? Like, yeah, okay, fine. I'll accept it. I'll work with it. I'll deal with it, you know. Then anything that is, you know, sooner than 9, 8, 9 p.m. is better, you know. So um, that's what I do. I kind of ask myself, what's the worst case scenario? And to me, um, to be doing this when it's 9 p.m. and I'm still not done and I'm hungry and I want to go home, but I feel like I can't because the job is not done yet. And I charge for my service being complete, not for the time it takes, because I feel like time is priceless. So I don't charge for my time. I don't, I don't charge for how many hours it takes. I charge for the service. 
So because I believe that way, if I don't complete the service, then I don't charge. And it would be a shame to put in four or five hours of sweat and then give up and then not charge my client and not get paid for any of it, you know? So <laughs> I would continue working until it was done. And the worst case scenario for me is that 9 p.m. rolls around and I'm still working and I'm fighting cramps in my legs and my toes, my feet are cramping up, my hands and my fingers are cramping up, everything hurts, everything sucks, and I'm still working. Am I willing to accept that? And I told, I, I usually tell myself, yeah, I am. Let's do it. Let's go, baby. Bring it. You know, I can handle it. But then, um, even if I get done at 6.30 or 7 p.m., I'm still okay with it because it was better than the worst case scenario that I've already accepted. And I learned this technique um, from the book, How to Stop Worrying and Start Living by Dale Carnegie. This, that's where I learned it. And he gives several examples of how people used it, but it really works. No matter what situation you're in, no matter how bad it feels, you just ask yourself, what's the worst case scenario? What's the worst case, you know? And you play it out and then you ask yourself, can I accept it, you know? And you make yourself, just make yourself accept the worst case scenario. And then once you accept the worst case scenario, then you, then you can work on improving that. And since you've already accepted the worst case scenario, any improvement is, is a positive change, you know? It makes a positive effect. So that's what I do. <clears throat> wow, it is so messy. Why is that foot so messy? Did I not? She's constantly trying to move that direction. And it makes it hard. It makes it like you're working on a sculpture that's constantly leaning over, falling over, you know, like that. So, wow. Alrighty. I'm gonna just take a second to breathe because I can feel myself getting really frustrated. And it's mostly because I'm tired because I just spent five hours, five plus hours combing out all the mats and tangles and everything and washing and drying hair and everything and like i'm just really exhausted oh you know but i go through this every day this is every day for me so it's not like this is anything new i recognize this and this is familiar to me i hit this point where i just feel like fuck it I'm done. I don't want to do anything anymore. I just, I just want to go to bed. You know, I just want to go in my bed and just curl up and I just want to give up on the day. You know, I hit that point and that's right about here, right about now. <laughs> Especially, you know, she's not doing it to, be, to make me upset. It's not personal, like I said, but when she keeps, you know, tucking her legs in, when she keeps falling down and laying down and it makes it harder on me when I'm already tired it's frustrating, you know? And I have to just admit it to myself. And then I have to just take a moment to just reset, right? Because um, feeling frustrated and pushing through like that is not gonna make anything, you know, good. It's not gonna make anything better. And even if I did finish the haircut, but I did it in a rough way, angrily, frustrated, then it's not going to be a great experience for her either, you know? So the next time it's going to be harder. So we made so much progress and each time it is getting easier, even though it's never easy, it is getting easier each time. I don't want to ruin it by working on her feeling frustrated. So I want to check myself. That's why I'm saying grooming is so much more than just being able to control the tools. We need to be able to control ourselves, our own emotions, you know? And that's, I think sometimes the harder part to do than learning how to control the tools, you know, learning how to control my own emotions. 
um, and my own frustration, you know, I think that's the more important part of grooming. There we go. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? Okay. <clears throat> All righty. But this is why when, um, like, you know, like the, the husbands sometimes, like the men of the house will say something, you know, like, you know, like, I don't know. They'll just, you know, when I'm feeling like this and then people say stuff to make it sound like it's my fault that I'm taking this long, um, it really kind of sets me off. <laughs> and yeah, I got to work on that. Okay, so this is an undercoat rake, and this is going to help smooth everything out. The reason why I can't get it to look smooth right now is because it still has so much of that fuzzy dead undercoat. And it's, it literally causes the texture to look rough. It look, makes the coat look rough and dry and fuzzy instead of like fluffy and soft. See right here on the neck too. And because she keeps turning, it does make it a little harder. There we go. So this is gonna give it that nice soft finish. See, by pulling all of this out, it's gonna give it that nice soft finish. It already feels nice and soft right here where I just went through with this brush. Okay. Yeah, like right here behind her neck where she was really matted earlier. <clears throat> there we go. Now it's looking much smoother. It's feeling much better. It's feeling smoother. There we go. Okay, wow. This is why I really feel like, you know, this is a workout because even if you weren't um, brushing hair and getting that resistance, you know, whenever you catch the dead hair, even if you weren't brushing like anything, let's just say you're brushing air. You did this for three hours. Your arms and your shoulders would feel really tired and the, the, the muscles would burn, right? Even if you weren't brushing anything but air, just this repetitive moment, movement, um, you know, <laughs> is enough. Is enough to wear you out, especially after three, four hours. There we go. But you know, it's just it's what it takes, you know, to get the coat and the skin clear, back to, you know, a normal, so we could function normally and breathe again, you know not deal with all of the the mats and all the stuff that's cluttering the pores clogging the pores there we go Well, there's certain areas where as I'm brushing this out, I can still smell some of the that nasty smell from the oil. 
There we go. I'm going this a little bit better. It's a little thin here because that's where all the mats were. So I'm just going to blend it a little bit better. There we go. Man, I just have to accept that it's not going to look that nice. There was just, I guess there was just way too much um, matting and dead hair. I'm just not going to get this haircut to look that smooth this time. And that's okay. I mean, I have to tell myself, considering how she, the condition she was in before I started, and that it took me five hours just to, you know, get the comb through her coat and get all those tangles out and all the dead hair, the mats out. Um, considering that, you know, I think that this is actually pretty good. Uh, I'm not proud of it, but under the circumstances, I feel like this is, you know, a good job. And I can be satisfied with it. At least she's not injured. At least she's not cut by accident anywhere. There's no blood. Man, that's so annoying though when she lifts her foot every time I'm trying to. Okay. It would be so nice to get a dog that um, stands well and lets me trim the areas that I want to trim. You know, they just let me do it. It's so nice to get dogs like that sometimes because, you know, challenging dogs are, are nice and rewarding because it is so challenging. But yeah, like towards the four or five hour mark when they're still doing that, it really tests your patience. It really does. <laughs> and I'm completely sober right now. So it doesn't really help. It would really help if I was like high or something, you know, probably wouldn't bother me so much, but here we go. Probably don't want to be high though when I'm scissoring around the dog's foot. Oh. Oh. I'm like trying to make it nice and smooth, but I can't when she lifts her foot and gets it out the way like that. If anybody's still watching, I'm like, Three minutes away from having a complete mental uh, meltdown, nervous breakdown. So stay tuned if you're still watching this. About three more minutes, and you're gonna see me cry and scream, and I'm gonna put string together curse words like you've never seen or heard before in your life. Okay, here we go. All right, because I just want to blend the tail, buddy. I'm just trying to blend the tail, you know? Here we go. There we go, girl. There we go. I'm probably gonna be super embarrassed later because I complain so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm sorry. I'm just really tired. And I want this to be over so bad. Okay. 
but I also want to feel proud of the job that I did. So, all right. It's hard to even see like if I'm if I'm actually making any progress because she keeps sitting down and laying down, and not, she's not standing straight. So it's hard to even see like where I need to cut even like. <laughs> Wow. Wow. I'm so frustrated. It's okay though. All right. Here we go, girl. All right. Just drop on detail. Okay. I don't even know why I can't get this blended straight. This hair is acting so funny because it's not really like the primary hairs. I feel like these are all the secondary fine hairs. So I can't really get it to lay nicely. It's just kind of staticky almost. Even after all the conditioner, like I use conditioner, I let her soak in it. I even sprayed conditioner before I started drying her. But still her hair seems so frizzy and staticky like and i realize now I'm, I'm looking at i'm like thinking okay this is probably because these are mostly secondary hairs the undercoat hair kind of not the primary hairs and the guard hair okay so i just have to be okay with it i'm just gonna kind of scissor around the outline kind of shape the outline and i'm just gonna be okay with it because now, I don't think that I'm going to be able to get this haircut smooth the way I want. I don't think I'm going to be able to get that smooth finish. And if I keep trying, I'm just going to drive myself crazy. So I'm just going to shape it like this with the thinning shape as best I can. Kind of tame the frizziness a little bit. And then I'm just going to be okay with it. And then next time I come and groom her, because she won't be matted head to toe, hopefully, not as bad as this time, then next time I'll try to make her look smoother and get that nice quality finish. But I think this time, this is gonna have to be enough because my body, I can feel my ribs cramping right now. My ribs are about to cramp and I've had these cramps on my side before and it's hard to get rid of because you gotta stretch like this but then this will start cramping up. So then I got to stretch like that and then it'll, this will cramp up again. And back and forth we go. All righty, because it's hard to stop and drink water, remind myself to drink water while I'm grooming dogs like this. Clean that up a little bit better. Man, her feet look so messy and I can't even help it. Okay. Okay. I did the best I could with the circumstances I've been given. Okay. Here we go. Summertime is just, summertime is like one of the worst times, but then the fall is actually really bad too. Um, fall, dogs go through this big coat change during the fall and winter, you know, like, yeah. Like, yeah, it's, this is a really tough job. <laughs> Especially if you want to do a good job and you really want the haircut to look nice. Sometimes, especially when they were all matted like this, um, sometimes I think this is just the best you're going to get, you know? Otherwise, I'm just going to keep trimming down. She's not even going to have any hair. All right. There we go. Okay, girl. All right. Okay, under the circumstances, this is my best. Okay, I'm okay with it. Okay, there we go. At least I tried, I did try my best. Give it my best shot, and I am I am satisfied with the results. Like 
compared to what she started, you know, how she was when I started, I'm, I'm happy with this. Because at least she's comfortable, you know, at least she's comfortable now. Okay. Shoot. Oh, someone just said enough. Yeah, right? Holy cow. Because I'm about to kill myself. Like, seriously, I'm about to go and just bash my head into the wall. All right. See, I see a little bit. It's right there, a little choppy. Um, but the thing is, see right there, it's choppy. I'm trying to smooth it out, with, but I just can't. I just can't smooth it because uh, um, it's just uh, like dead, fuzzy hair. Um, I thought I got all of it, but I mean... You can't really get all of it, I guess, because there's just some trillions of them. And so let me just see if I can smooth this out just a little bit. There we go. There we go. All right, at least the face is smooth. smooth there. there we go. All right. Good girl. Okay, so. Yeah, right? She looks nice. All right, girl, right? Her her paws are round. Okay. And check this out. There we go. All the mats that were here behind the neck, on her face, behind her ears, her chest, the armpits, all it's all gone. See? I can just get this comb to go all through her. Nice and soft. Her skin is feeling soft and smooth again. There we go. Okay. And she used to really spin, like, out of control. And she used to really, like, fight. So this is actually a, a huge improvement, you know? The, the fact that she just kind of turns a little bit, you know? I can work with that. She is making lots of improvements. There we go. Lots of progress. It's a little rough here, but that's okay. It's better than, um, you know, like over, over brushing it and then getting all the bloody spots and everything. At least we avoided that. And I was able to get all of the mats out. There we go. There we go. All right, girl. There we are. All righty, I'm gonna let her down. Good job, girl. Oh my goodness. Uh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. There you go. Okay, there you go. All righty. There you go. Good job, girl. You're all done. Oh my God. Okay. Okay, awesome. Very white. Awesome. Love how this girl behaves well enough to not need the loop on her. Yeah, right? She used to be crazy. Seriously, Barry. I feel the frustration. The last lab that was brought to me for a summer shave was old. Did not like standing and would not and would try to throw his backside off the bed. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. And it, it gets it starts to get so frustrating, right, Barry? And and the thing is you almost feel guilty. You almost feel guilty for feeling frustrated because it's like, wait a minute. But I love dogs, you know? I, I'm doing this because I love dogs. And the fact that I'm feeling frustrated with this dog, I'm feeling upset, makes me feel guilty, you know? To even admit it and talk about it out loud makes me feel like, oh no, people are gonna judge me, you know? But I think it's important, Barry, for us groomers to be more honest and let people know like, hey man, life sucks right now. <laughs> um, Melissa, I had a boss that had a haircut like that. Oh, nice. No robot can do this work. Dogs are like children. Exactly. Uh, Melissa Jean saying this dog loves you. Yeah, I mean, she tolerates me. I have only been grooming professionally for a bit, less than a year. These two areas scare me. Uh huh. I really think your work area could use a bit of evaluation on student and, by student and things tray. Also stay away from sugar. Yeast can, yeast can grow and make you itchy internally. Uh huh. Yeah, and the thing is, I usually work um, over there in that corner, but you know, today because of um, you know they have new furniture and everything, that's why I, I'm in here in this corner here. But it's actually pretty nice, you know. I like it because it gives her less options. She can't really go that way. She can only come towards me. So I like, I kind of like that. Um, so yeah, I don't mind. Um, but yeah, it is kind of 
you know, not really Feng Shui, the way it's set up. Uh, let's see here. Um, Barry White says, tips on clipper work near the tendons on the rear legs. How about dogs with lots of moles? This, yeah. Um, so Barry, what I do is I try to just make a mental note of where those skin tags are. And while, while I'm brushing or combing or anything, I'll just keep my finger on that, on that bump and comb around it and try to work around it. But that's usually what I do. But hey, sometimes no matter how careful we are, those bumps open up, right? And those scabs open up and the dog starts bleeding. What can you do? It's part of grooming, you know? Um, let's see. Melissa Jean says, June, everyone gets bored with their jobs eventually. You do such nice work and you have a loving personality. Thank you. Debbie says, hi, what's up, Debbie? Grand style dog grooming, what's up? Dude, love to see you. Cheers from the DMV. Oh, nice. <laughs> Helen Daniels, hey, June, so good to see you on here. I missed your videos, awesome. Okay, I think I caught up with all of the comments. Perfect. Sorry I couldn't go through the comments on the last video. I kind of was like, I wanted to get done, you know, and I felt like to stop and read the comments and everything was just going to put a real like pause in the flow. That's why earlier I didn't go through the comments or anything. I just, I was like, I just ended the video, got the dog, you know, started in the bath. Um, Barry, so you work out of your home? No, I wish this was my home. Holy cow, look at this place. It's like a freaking art gallery you know what i'm saying anyways i don't want to flex because it's not even my home to flex <laughs> no this is my client's house so this is what i do i go to my client's homes let me see if i can get a good good lighting here here there we go okay it's like almost like a interview um on a reality show so i go to my client's homes and i set up wherever they like room their dogs and then i go home oh look at her she has like lots of read oh she does Anyway, she has a lot to be talked. She's probably thinking, when is this guy going to leave? All right, let me go ahead and clean up, pack up, and I'm out of here. See you guys. Thanks for watching.